And veterinarian David Graff joins us live this midday to take your pet health questions. So thanks for being here. And who do you have on your lap? Her, She's getting settled in. Yeah, her name is Kitty Kitty. She's from the Cedar Rapids Animal Care and Control. And she's a one to two year old uh, spade female. Very nice kitty. She's uh, very demanding of love. Yes, she was sitting here just purring just a couple of minutes ago yeah. in the commercial yeah. break. And then she we put her head so. right under my hand, just like yeah, that. Like she pet says, me. "Pet me." <laughs> so, kitty, kitty is available for adoption. We have Bill on the phone with a question to kick things off. Go ahead, Bill. Yeah, uh, we live in Corville, and we got a lot of uh, calcium and lime in our water. I mean, beyond belief. Uh, will that harm our cats in any way? It, it shouldn't. Um, mag magnesium, high levels of magnesium can help contribute to urinary tract disease in cats. Uh, but, ca but calcium, it probably isn't a problem. Though for cats that have chronic recurring urinary tract problems, sometimes, culprit, sometimes it's recommended that they be on distilled water. Okay. Just as a precaution, well, as but, say, but there, times... there really is no no connection between hard water and urinary tract disease in cats. There's a connection between magnesium and urinary tract disease in cats, and magnesium is found in in foods in excess in many foods. Okay, but definitely so. something you might want to check with your vet mm -hmm. about. Right. Specific. And right. we oftentimes have to take vitamins as you know when we need extra minerals and su right. supplements and things like that. So obviously sometimes pets might need it too, but. Too much of something can be a bad thing, too. That's right. Exactly. Excesses can be more dangerous than th sometimes. Yeah. So. We have Bernie on the phone with a question for us now. Go ahead, Bernie. Well, good morning. I have a question. You know, spring's coming. Hallelujah. Hopefully. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, I have bleeding hearts coming up and irises, and I heard the leaves were very poisonous for a dog. Um, I, I, anytime somebody asks me about a plant, I always have to look it up in a book or refer them to uh, the National Poison Control Center. Mm -hmm. There are so many different plants that I always try to make sure I get it right. So, so if you call my office, we can give you the number to the, to the, to the pet poison hotline. And, they, and if you know the exact genus and species name of the plant, they can tell you. Yeah, I think it's probably a good, goes without saying, mm -hmm. you know, I've right. seen my dog eat things and then yeah. throw up later. So I think it's good to just always know what your dogs are, right. or cats, or anybody's yep. eating. Yep. Um, and we, real quick, we're almost out of time, but you were saying you had to pull a tooth recently. Yes, I, I was just going to talk today a little bit about dental care in cats. Uh, they like to get cavities. Dogs like to get gum disease and periodontal disease. Cats like to get cavities, and especially it's attributed to the high acid content of cat foods these days and they can get cavities right at the gum line and which unfortunately frequently results in extractions. So you got to take care of them at right, home or right. so put what, them under to get what, cleaned. What can you do? Have your cat's teeth cleaned at least once a year and uh, there are some preventatives. There's a food called Hill's Prescription Diet TD which if you feed it to your cat, it, it scrubs their teeth. Mm -hmm. All right, yep. like a toothbrush that they right. eat. All right, well, Dr. Graff, thanks for joining us. And Kitty Kitty, available at Cedar Rapids Animal Care and Control. And coming up tomorrow, our financial expert will be here talking about why long-term investors want to ignore IPO hype. Stay with us here on TV9.